ever feel like you're kind of like swimming upstream? You know, mm -hmm. pushing so hard towards your goals. Yeah. But you're not getting anywhere. Like something's holding you back. Well, today we're diving deep into this whole idea of personal power. We're right. going to figure out how to break free from those things that keep us from reaching our true potential. You know, it's interesting because those things you're talking about, those often come from what we call power structures. Okay. And I think when most of us think about power structures, we think about the big systems like governments or companies or, you know, institutions. Right. Yeah. But they're also these kind of like sneaky power structures, the ones that operate on a personal level. Oh, interesting. Yeah. They're shaping our thoughts and beliefs, even our actions in ways that we probably don't even realize. So it's not just about who's in charge out there. It's about what's happening inside of us. Exactly. And, you know, to really understand how to lead from within, we need to understand the difference between a few things. The power over, power within, and power with. So power over is all about external control, dominance, validation. It's that voice that tells you your worth depends on what you achieve, what you own, or what other people think of you. It's making me think about all that pressure to be successful. Like you have to have the perfect job, the perfect body, the perfect life. It's like what we see on social media all the time. Yeah, that's a perfect example. Power over in action. Oh. And it's a trap, right? Because it keeps you so focused on what other people think instead of your own internal compass. Right. But then there's power within. That's about recognizing your own worth, your strength, and your ability to create the life that you want. It's about trusting your gut, honoring your values, and making choices that are true to yourself. I love that. And what about power with? That sounds pretty interesting. Power with is all about collaboration, connection, community. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that we're not meant to do this alone. We can do so much more when we work together, share our strengths, support each other. It's like the power of we instead of just me. Right, yeah, I like that. Okay, so we have power over, that's the external force, and then power within and power with the internal strengths. Mm. How do we actually tap into those inner sources of power? Well, that's where things get really interesting. These are the patterns of thinking and behaving that keep us trapped in that power over mentality. The 12 levels of something it calls societal programming, these things that we often unconsciously buy into. 12 levels. So that sounds a little overwhelming. I know, right? Can you give us an example of one of these levels yeah. and like how it might actually show up in our lives? Totally. So let's take blind production, for instance. Okay. This is the trap of believing that your worth depends on how much you're doing, achieving, producing. Yeah. It's that feeling of being on a hamster wheel always striving for that next goal, but never really feeling satisfied or worthy. Oh, yeah. I've definitely been there like that <laughs> never-ending to-do list and the pressure to always be on, always be achieving. It's exhausting. Totally exhausting. And that's how it traps you, right? It keeps you disconnected from your power within. It's about recognizing that you have inherent worth, not because of what you do or achieve. That's a debate shift. Yeah, the key is to move away from defining yourself by your achievements and instead recognizing your own value simply by being. Right. It's like we're so busy proving ourselves to the world that we forget to just be ourselves. Exactly. And, you know, this connects to another level called illusion of control. Okay. We often think we need to control every single thing in our lives to feel safe and secure. But the more we try to control, the more anxious and stressed we become. It's like that saying, the only thing you can truly control is your own reaction. Right. But that's so much easier said than done. Yeah, it definitely takes practice. But true power comes from embracing uncertainty. Trusting that you have what it takes within you to handle whatever life throws your way. It's about shifting from trying to force things to be a certain way to being present with what is. So it's about letting go of that need to control everything and trusting in like a greater power. Not necessarily a greater power in the traditional sense. It's more about trusting in yourself, your ability to adapt and learn and grow. It's about building that inner resilience. Mm. That's really empowering. Okay, so uh, we've got blind production and illusion of control. What other traps should we be watching out for? Oh, we've only just scratched the surface with these forces of distorted power, you know? It's, right. it's like we're uncovering this hidden map. Oh, wow. That shows us all the sneaky ways these power structures are messing with our lives. Okay, so I'm ready to keep exploring this map. Yeah. What other traps should we be on the lookout for? All right, let's talk about the myth of scarcity. 
This is the belief that there just isn't enough to go around. Not enough money, not enough success, not enough love. Mm. It's that feeling of competition and comparison that we see everywhere these days. Yeah, this one really resonates with me. I think social media makes that scarcity feeling so much worse. Yeah. You know, we're constantly seeing these images of people who seem to have it all. Right. And it's easy to feel like you're falling behind. Yeah. And it's almost like we're programmed to compare ourselves to others. Right. And that myth of scarcity, it feeds on that, you know? It does. It makes us feel like we have to fight for a little piece of the pie. Right. But there's actually plenty for everyone. We just have to be open to it. So how do we shift from that scarcity mindset to one of abundance? Well, true abundance comes from within, uh -huh. from gratitude, connection, purpose. You know, it's about appreciating what you already have. Yeah. Celebrating the successes of others and focusing on creating value instead of competing for limited resources. That's a really powerful shift in perspective. Yeah. And, you know, it makes me think about another trap that I often fall into. The misdirection of the future is all. Oh, yeah. I'm totally guilty of this. I'm constantly putting off happiness or gratification until I achieve some future goal. Yeah, it's super common these days, especially in this achievement-obsessed culture. It is. You know, we're always striving for that next milestone, that next promotion, that next big thing. Yeah. But while we're doing that, we miss out on all the beauty and joy that's happening right now. It's like we're so focused on getting somewhere that we forget to enjoy the journey. Exactly. Savoring each moment, finding fulfillment in the here and now. True power isn't about some future accomplishment. It's about the choices that we make today. So how do we break free from this misdirection of the future? Yeah. It's easier said than done to just stop striving and start savoring. Yeah, it definitely takes practice. But one thing that can help is to start a gratitude practice. Take a few moments every day to really appreciate your loved ones, the beauty of nature. It really helps to shift your focus from what you're lacking to what you already have. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about some pretty big traps here. Blind production, illusion of control, myth of scarcity, misdirection of the future. It's all about recognizing patterns mm -hmm. and then having the courage to challenge them. So what's next on our journey through these 12 levels? Are ready to uncover more of these hidden power dynamics? Let's dig into the illusion of standards, shall we? <laughs> We're constantly bombarded with messages about what we should be, how we should look, what we should achieve. And it's easy to fall into that trap of comparing ourselves to these external benchmarks and then feeling like we just don't measure up. Oh, I know this one all too well. Yeah. Social media is like the breeding ground for the illusion of standards. Well, and that's the point, isn't it? Yeah. These perfect lives are often just that, illusions. Right. They're carefully crafted images designed to project a certain image. Yeah. But the truth is everyone's struggling in their own way. The key is to develop that discernment, yeah. to recognize that those external standards are often arbitrary and meaningless. It's about tuning into your own inner compass, your own values, and defining what really matters to you. And that brings us to another related trap, the left displacement. This is that tendency to trust external authorities more than we trust ourselves. Mm -hmm. Experts, institutions, even social media influencers, you know, right. putting more faith in them than in our own intuition and wisdom. I can see how that ties into the illusion of standards. Like we're looking outside of ourselves for validation. Exactly. We're looking yeah. for permission to be ourselves. But true belief comes from within. It's about cultivating that connection with your own inner wisdom, that voice that knows what's true for you. It's a powerful act of rebellion against those power over structures. I love that. This is so inspiring. It's like we're learning to take back our own power bit by bit. OK, what's the next level? What else should we be aware of? OK, let's talk about calculation of blame. All right. This one's sneaky because it often works beneath the surface. It's that tendency to blame others or external circumstances when things go wrong. Oh, yeah, I've definitely done that. It's easier to point the finger at someone else than to own up to our own mistakes or shortcomings. Exactly. And that's how this distorted power dynamic keeps us stuck. Because when you're busy blaming others, you're giving your power away. It's like saying, I'm not in control of my own life. So it's about taking responsibility for our own choices, our own actions, even our own mistakes. It's about owning your experiences, the good and the bad, with compassion and understanding. True power comes from recognizing that you can learn from your mistakes and make different choices next time. Yeah, okay, I'm seeing a pattern here. Each of these levels seems to point back to the importance of self-awareness, 
and taking responsibility for our own lives. To breaking free from these distorted power dynamics. Like we're shining a light on these subconscious patterns that have been holding us back. Exactly. And once you bring those patterns into the light, you can start to dismantle them and create a more empowered way of being. Okay, what's next on our journey through these 12 levels? Well, let's explore the power of fear, or rather, the manipulation through fear. It's often used to control and manipulate us, whether it's fear of failure, fear of rejection, or just fear of the unknown. I know this one way too well. It's like that little voice in my head that's always whispering, what if you're not good enough? Or what if you fail? And that voice can be so sneaky because it often pretends to be our protector. It does. Trying to keep us safe. Right. But the truth is, playing it safe often keeps us from experiencing all the richness and fullness that life has to offer. How do we quiet that inner critic and step into our power? It starts by recognizing that fear is just a normal human emotion. Okay. It's part of what keeps us alive. Right. But it doesn't have to control us. We can acknowledge our fears without letting them dictate our actions. So it's about facing our fears instead of running away from them. We all have the inner strength to face our fears and move through them. It's like a call to action to rise above those fears that have been holding us back. Yes. It's an invitation to step into a more empowered version of yourself. <laughs> and speaking of stepping into our power, let's talk about service misplacement. Service misplacement. Wait. Now, this one might sound a little counterintuitive, so bear with me. Okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. This level highlights the trap of believing that our worthiness depends on how much we do for others, how much we sacrifice, how much we give. Now, service is a beautiful thing, but it becomes distorted when it's driven by a need to prove ourselves, to earn love or validation. Well, that's an interesting distinction. I think a lot of us, especially women, are raised to believe that our worth is tied to our ability to take care of others. Absolutely. And it's important to recognize those societal expectations and how they can unconsciously influence our behavior. Oh, okay. You know, are we giving from a place of genuine love and abundance? Yeah. Or are we trying to fill some void within ourselves? So it's about checking in with our intentions and making sure that our service is coming from a place of wholeness, not from a need to prove ourselves. Precisely. It's about recognizing that your worth is inherent. You don't need to earn it through acts of service. You are worthy simply by being you. I'm starting to see how all of these levels are interconnected, forming this web of distorted power dynamics that keep us from living our most authentic and empowered lives. The beauty of this deep dive is that it's just the beginning, you know, peeling back the layers of societal programming and reclaiming your innate power. It's important to remember that these levels, they're not just isolated concepts. They all kind of work together to reinforce this power over dynamic, keeping us from tapping into our full power within and power with. Okay, so let's keep peeling back those layers. All right, let's talk about disconnection within mass consciousness. Now, this one might sound a little out there, okay. but it's really relevant to our daily lives, especially in today's world where everyone's so connected. For example, think about all the pressure to conform to certain beauty standards. So it's like we're swimming in this sea of ideas, mm. and it's easy to just get swept away by the currents of popular opinion even if those opinions don't really resonate with our own values. Exactly. And that's where the disconnection comes in. When we get too caught up in that mass consciousness, we lose touch with our own inner compass, our own unique perspective, our own truth. It's really important to nurture that connection with your intuition, that inner voice that guides you towards what's truly right for you. All right, let's talk about oppression of coercion and hate. This one's a bit heavier, but it's important to acknowledge. It represents kind of like the extreme end of that power over spectrum. This level talks about how fear, control, and manipulation can escalate into outright oppression and violence. It's about dehumanizing others, using force to silence dissent, creating systems that benefit some at the expense of others. It's sad, but we see this playing out all over the world in different ways. Even in the face of hatred and oppression, our own inherent power stays with us. It encourages us to remember that we're all interconnected. We're all part of the same human family, and love is the most powerful force for change. The key is to shift our focus from the future to right now, the present moment. Okay. It's about finding joy in the simple things, because when you're present and engaged in this moment, you're not letting your past or your worries about the future control you. You're choosing to live fully right now. This has been such an incredible journey. We've explored these 12 levels of societal programming in depth, uncoupling all these hidden power structures that can prevent us from living our empowered lives. 
And it's important to remember that this is just the beginning. So what's the main takeaway for our listeners? What can they do to start reclaiming their power? Well, the first step is awareness. Pay attention to how these 12 levels are showing up in your life. Yeah. Notice when you're feeling trapped, controlled, or disconnected from your true self. Yeah. Then start challenging those patterns. Cultivate self-awareness, self-acceptance, and self-compassion. Remember, you have the power to choose your thoughts, your beliefs, and your actions. You have the power to create a life that aligns with your deepest values and your highest potential. That's incredibly inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing all of this wisdom with us. I feel like I have a whole new set of tools for navigating the world and reclaiming my own power. And remember this journey of self-discovery, it's ongoing. Right. Be patient with yourself, celebrate your successes, and keep exploring. You are capable of amazing things. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling energized and ready to step into my power. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive, everyone.